There are five major properties of a telescope that determine how it functions and what we can observe with it. These properties are, first, aperture, which is the diameter of the telescope. Second, the detectors on the telescope. Third, where the telescope is located. Fourth, the range of wavelengths it can observe in. And fifth and last, the field of view, or how much of the sky can be observed at one time. These five properties are not independent of each other. Location and detectors both affect the wavelength range, for example. But by looking at each of these, we'll get a much better sense of what considerations go into telescope design. As we've already mentioned, the aperture of a telescope, in other words, the diameter of the primary mirror or lens, is the most important number used to describe it. That's because the aperture impacts the most important advantages a telescope gives us. First, a telescope has to gather light to let us see faint objects, and the aperture determines how much light the telescope can gather. The bigger the aperture, the more light enters it, and the fainter the objects we can see. In this telescope, all of the light that goes down this tube to hit the mirror at the bottom will be focused onto the eyepiece at the side. Also, a telescope has to have a good angular resolution. Angular resolution is the angular size of the finest details you can see distinctly. In the picture at the right, we see two images of the same object. The one on top has a large angular resolution, meaning there's very little detail visible while the bottom image has a much smaller, hence better, resolution, so you can see the light resolved into two bright points. Angular resolution is usually measured in degrees or fraction of a degree. For example, an arc minute is one sixtieth of a degree. A human eye has a typical angular resolution of one or two arc minutes. An arc second is one sixtieth of an arc minute, or one thirty-six hundredth of a degree. We often describe angular resolution of a telescope in arc seconds. The best possible angular resolution a telescope can have will depend on two things, the aperture of the telescope and the wavelength of the light. Larger telescopes have better angular resolution, while longer wavelengths give worse angular resolution. Of course, this is the best possible angular resolution. In reality, other factors, like the effects of the atmosphere, can make this angular resolution worse. We'll look at this later when we talk about location. The reason larger telescopes have better angular resolution is because of a process called diffraction. Since light is a wave, it can bend around corners. This is what we call diffraction. When light enters the telescope, it bends at the edges of the primary mirror or lens. This bending blurs the image produced. The larger the telescope, the smaller the effect of diffraction. So the diffraction limit of a telescope is the best angular resolution the telescope can have based on its size and the wavelength of light you're observing. The formula that gives the angular resolution is this one. Theta equals 2.5 times 10 to the fifth arc seconds times lambda over d. As we saw before, lambda is the wavelength of the light. d here is the diameter of the telescope, and theta is the angular resolution given in units of arc seconds. Remember that an arc second is an angle that is one sixtieth of an arc minute, or one thirty-six hundredth of a degree. In this formula, the wavelength of light and the diameter of the telescope have to be in the same units. That way, these units cancel, and we're left with just arc seconds. Usually, we'll use either nanometers or meters for this. Notice that this formula follows the pattern we described before. As the diameter gets bigger, the angular resolution gets smaller. A smaller angle here means you can resolve finer details in the objects you're studying. Often, we know the angular resolution we want, so we can use the same formula to determine the minimum size of the telescope we need. To do this, we rearrange the formula to solve for diameter. If you've had some algebra, you should see if you can get from one version to the other. 
So the minimum telescope size is d equals 2.5 times 10 to the fifth arc seconds times the wavelength divided by the angular resolution. Notice that the way this is set up, as the angular resolution needed gets smaller, the telescope has to get bigger. In this formula, the angular size has to be given in arc seconds, and the diameter will come out in the same units as the wavelength. If you've got a wavelength in nanometers, you should convert the answer into meters so that you've got an answer that is more intuitive. Let's work through an example of calculating the minimum size of a telescope based on the angular resolution needed. Imagine you want to get detailed images of the planet Jupiter. Jupiter is 50 arc seconds across, and we want to see details on the surface that are only 1% of that size, or 100 times smaller than the planet itself. If we're using visible light, what size of telescope do we need to produce this kind of image? Since we want to see details that are 100 times smaller than the planet, we'll need an angular resolution that is 100 times smaller than 50 arc seconds. 50 divided by 100 is 0 0.5 arc seconds. So that's the resolution we're looking for. We don't need any other information so we can go ahead and solve the problem. We start by writing down the formula, then we write it down again, filling in the numbers. Notice that we've got arc seconds divided by arc seconds, so those will cancel out. When we divide the numbers in the fraction, we get 1,000 nanometers, so we multiply that by the constant out front. That gives us 2.5 times 10 to the eighth nanometers for the diameter of the telescope. It's hard to tell just how big that is, since nanometers are such a small unit. So we need to convert this into meters. Remember that there are 10 to the ninth nanometers in just one meter. So that's the conversion factor we need to use. Remember to write the conversion as a fraction with one meter on top and 10 to the ninth nanometers on the bottom. And multiply this by the diameter we just calculated. Notice that the nanometers cancel out leaving us with units of meters. When we finish the calculation, we get 0 0.25 meters, which is around 10 inches across. So a large backyard telescope is big enough to give you this much resolution. Note that this is the theoretically best resolution the telescope can have. Problems with the optics and the Earth's atmosphere can mean that any given telescope won't reach the diffraction limit. For example, most ground-based telescopes working in the visible part of the spectrum rarely get better than one arc second resolution, just because our atmosphere blurs the image by this much or more. Later on, we'll discuss this when we talk about seeing. Now try calculating the size of a radio telescope working at 6 centimeters would have to be in order to get as good a resolution on Jupiter as the optical telescope we just looked at. Don't forget to convert your answer into meters. Do you remember how many centimeters there are in a meter? As I just said, the longest wavelengths will have the worst angular resolutions. Since radio waves define the long wavelength end of the electromagnetic spectrum, we'll get the worst angular resolution in radio for any given size of telescope. One solution to this is to make very big telescopes and the largest radio telescopes can be hundreds of meters or more across. We can do this because the long waves don't require a mirror-smooth surface to reflect them, so it's easier to build very big telescopes. But there's another trick radio astronomers have been using for decades to vastly improve their resolution, and that's interferometry. Interferometry is the process of combining light from two or more separate telescopes. If the light from these telescopes is combined correctly, then you can get the resolution of a much bigger telescope. In fact, it behaves like a telescope that is as big as the separation between the telescopes. Imagine what this means. The set of telescopes we're looking at here is called the Very Large Array. It can use up to 27 telescopes spread out over an area that is up to 36 kilometers across, giving it the resolution of a 36-kilometer telescope. 
This is by no means as big as it gets. Astronomers have combined telescopes on separate continents, getting the angular resolution of a telescope as big as the Earth. And there have even been experiments done with telescopes in orbit around the Earth. Notice that interferometry doesn't give the light-gathering ability of such a large telescope. It can still only gather light over an area as big as the surface of the individual mirrors. Also, this works best for long wavelength light. That's because you have to be able to measure the distance between the telescopes to an accuracy much better than the wavelengths of the light. This is much easier to do when the wavelengths are centimeters or meters, as in radio waves, rather than nanometers for visible light. In addition to radio interferometry, there are now several observatories that do interferometry in the infrared part of the spectrum. These do not have the huge baselines that are used in radio, but a couple of infrared telescopes, a few tens of meters apart, can get a huge improvement in resolution. 